Britain and America have again warned Russia of devastating sanctions if it invades Ukraine. The Foreign Secretary Liz Truss says the UK will this week unveil a range of sanctions legislation that she says would leave nowhere to hide for Putin's oligarchs. Moscow has deployed around 100,000 troops near the border with Ukraine, angry that a country, once part of the Soviet Union, is now seeking much closer ties with the West. Boris Johnson is due to speak with President Putin and visit Eastern Europe in the coming days and is considering doubling the number of British troops deployed in the region. Well, our international correspondent Ola Girin is live in Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine for us tonight. Ola. Well, Clive, amid the crescendo of international concern about a possible invasion, there are particular fears about this region. Rebels backed by the Kremlin have been battling the Ukrainian government for years here in the east. Now, today we were given access to the front lines in this conflict, which are static but still deadly. Ukrainian troops told us they are ready for a Russian invasion if it comes. One said it will be hard for all of us, but we will stand our ground. On the frozen front lines of eastern Ukraine, it's head down in the trenches to avoid sniper fire. Maria is following in the footsteps of her military father. She keeps watch for the enemy, separatists backed by Moscow, who seized territory here eight years ago. If Russia invades, she'll be facing far worse. Do you believe the Russians are coming? I try to avoid politics, she says. I try to avoid watching TV. Psychologically, I try not to worry too much. We have heard about the build-up of equipment, but we are ready. Troops here say they are not on a higher level of alert. So far, they stress, there's nothing to see here a view echoed by the government in Kiev. These front lines haven't moved in years, but the fear is there could soon be a much bigger conflict here. And this is about more than the future of Ukraine. It's about the future shape of NATO, about the security of Europe. Battle lines are being drawn now in a new Cold War. All's quiet on the Eastern Front for the moment. And Moscow continues to insist it won't invade. But is this the calm before the storm? Some here know only too well what Russia and its allies can do. Shelling by separatists last November destroyed Ludmila Momot's home of 30 years. She's come back to show us the wreckage. And she had this plea for President Putin. Make peace. Reach an agreement. You're all adults, educated people. Make peace so that people can live freely, without tears and suffering. This might be just a foretaste of what's ahead. The international warnings are stark. President Biden says a Russian invasion would change the world. Only Vladimir Putin knows what's coming in his modern day version of war and peace. Orla Giron, BBC News, Eastern Ukraine. Well, our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, is in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. Um, Lise, we've got the threat of tough sanctions, but this is at the beginning of a week where high-level diplomacy is going to be to the fore. Yes, well, Boris Johnson says he's heading this way to accelerate diplomacy and send a stark message to Moscow. There already is a lot of talk and a lot of telephone calls to try to avert this shooting war. But this is also a moment when Western leaders, all of them, want to be seen to be doing something. And London's view seems to be matching Washington's, that an attack by Russia next month seems all but certain. 
Now, there's far less certainty in most European capitals, as well as here in Kiev, where President Zelensky has been warning that too much of this talk about escalation could actually create it. But I think you can say that no one is really certain what happens next, not even President Putin. Okay, Lise, thank you. Lise Doucette, they're live in Kiev in Ukraine.